Does anybody besides me ever get tired? I mean, you think about it. All the stuff that's going on in this world, all the stuff that's happening daily, we are bombarded by the news of another riot, another disease, some kind of crime that's been committed. I mean, it seems like sometimes it just wears you out just to, just to hear what's going on in this world. You know, tomorrow night I have the privilege and the opportunity uh, to speak at a funeral of a dear friend of ours that went on to be with the Lord. 96 years old. 96 years old, that's a long time. And all the time I ever knew her, she always trusted in God. She always had a cheerful word to say. She was always a trusting sort. And you know, as I was studying about that, what I was going to talk about tomorrow night, I couldn't help but think about uh, what makes someone who's 96 years old and seen all that they had to see trust in the Lord as much as they did. You know what? I'm bound to persuade and believe it's because God is faithful. It's not so much us being faithful to God. It's God is always faithful to us. In the book of Isaiah in the 40th chapter, it talks about the everlasting God. You know, I think sometimes we forget that, do we not? We forget that God is forever, that he always has been, he always is, and he always will be. When he told Moses to go and tell the children of Israel who had sent him, he, he told him, he said, you tell them that I am sent me. Think about that. His name, he called himself I am. I am. That pretty much says, I am everything. I always have been, always will be. So if he, we can trust in an everlasting God. Don't you think it's time that we start acting like it? In the 28th verse it says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faileth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. That's beautiful scripture, is it not? I've seen it on paintings. I've seen it on plaques where people have put it up. And sometimes I guess we pass right on by without even thinking about it. But when we start really looking into it, trusting in the everlasting God, to be able to trust in someone. I mean, after all, why don't we trust in God who always has been and always will be? I think about it sometimes about how limited our understanding is of God's ways. It says here, it says, you know, there is no searching of his understanding. Sometimes I think we try to put too many humanly attributes on God. We try to put our feelings on him. We try to put the way we think on him. We try to see God through our eyes instead of seeing us through God's eyes. There is no search in his understanding. You see, he knows it all. He's always been there. He always will be. Oftentimes, I think people get weary because we think that he's lost control or we're fighting this battle alone. The Bible tells me here, he says that when we get weary and we get tired, that he will raise us up. That he will give us strength. That those that are faint, he will rise them up as wings of eagles. Can you imagine that promise? A lot of us think that we have to wait till we get to heaven for that kind of strength, but really we don't. It comes from trusting in the everlasting God. When we look about us, we see all the world in its chaos and turmoil. Sometimes it's really hard, is it not? Faith gets a little thin. Sometimes it's even hard to see. It seems like we're uh, seeing on a cloudy day. But you know, the other day I was uh, talking to my son who was on our way to work, and I was looking at the, uh, at the sunshine, and I was reminded to always look for the sunshine. I think I've said it before, and maybe uh, you weren't privileged to listen to it. But you know what? The sunrise is always there. Sometimes it's obscured by fog. Sometimes it's obscured by clouds. But it doesn't stop the sun from shining. I think sometimes we forget to look for the sunshine. We forget to realize that behind those clouds, the sun is still shining. That through that fog and that haze, the sun is still shining. I think sometimes we need to remember that in our life. That the sun is shining. That God is still working His work. That there is power in His plan. And his plan is for us to prosper. Not maybe monetarily or by the things that we own, but his plans are us to prosper in him, to learn more about his love, more, learn more about his care, get strength from him, rely on him more. You see, I think it's counterintuitive sometimes for us, right? I mean, we rely on our own strength. We rely on what we can do. We rely on what we know. And when it gets outside of that realm, we panic. We don't understand how it's going to happen or how that that this whole thing is going to work out. We've got to realize that it's not about what we understand. 
It's about what God understands. His ways are so much higher than our ways. It says, the Bible tells us that, that they're so high that we can't even begin to understand them. So why do we limit God, the everlasting God? Our life is such a short time. The Bible describes it as a vapor that's just here right now and then goes away. It's like a flower that fades. But God is everlasting. I mean, think about it. The only thing in this universe that always has been and always will be is God. I mean, there is no limit to him. So when we get weary, let's remember that it's not our fight, it's not our battle, it's not our universe, and it's not our world. It's all God's. And that we can trust in the everlasting God. I think sometimes we'd be better off if we remember that. He says that, you know, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I think sometimes we have a hard time with that, right? I mean, after all, probably those who'll be watching this video are probably a lot like me. You're so patient that you can wait. It just so easy to wait upon God. It's so easy to wait on His plan. It's so easy to wait for things to come about that we just know is going to happen, right? Wrong. We get impatient. We want it our way. We want it now. We want it as soon as we click the button. We want it to be our way, right? I mean, after all, is that not the way that God works? I don't think so. In my life, there's been a lot more waiting sometimes than there has been instant gratification, okay? There's been times that I've been waiting. You know why that was? Because God was teaching me patience. He was teaching me that great things can happen when we wait on Him. He was teaching me that when we wait upon Him, that we can renew our strength. Some of the greatest things I've ever experienced in my life, spiritually and physically, have been things that I've waited on. Things that I thought that I should have had, or could have had, or would have had right then. But God said, no, it's not time yet. If you don't believe me that it pays to wait on something, just do this experiment for me sometime, okay? I love pinto beans. Nobody in my family else loves pinto beans. I love pinto beans. Here's what you do. If you don't, don't think it pays to wait upon something, take your beans, wash them real good. Turn the stove on, put them in a pot. Cook them for five minutes and then pull them out and eat them. Chances are you're probably going to break your teeth. You know why? Because it takes time. It takes time to cook good pinto beans. What do you do? Turn the stove on, you cook them. And if you really have patience, you cook them a little bit longer. Then you turn them down low, and you cook them a little bit longer. Be careful, Sandy. Don't cook them dry. I know you were saying, who's Sandy? She's our church clown. She understands. But here's the thing about this. We have to take time. We have to take time to do the things that are good. Cooking beans are just like it. You have to take time and let it cook. Sometimes God has to let his plan work its way through. And it touches so many other lives while it's on its way. There's been so many times that God's plan in my life has touched other people on its way through. That I've been able to uh, see how that God's plan is so good that it, it's kind of infectious. It just kind of goes everywhere. You see, oftentimes we don't care about that though, do we? We just want it our way. We want it when we want it. So with that, let's do this. Let's realize that we can trust in an everlasting God. Let's pray that God shows us the way to trust in Him. Let's pray that He gives us uh, power to the faint. If you're here, if you're listening tonight and you're you're just so weary that you're just about to the end of your rope, realize that He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, He increases your strength. After all, who else can? I mean, really truthfully, I can't increase my own strength. I don't have power to give it to them when I'm tired. It seems like that when we get to our place where we can't take one more step, God gives us the strength to take one more step. I'm not telling you to run the race right now. I'm not telling you to finish the marathon. I'm telling you to take one more step. One more step and trust it in God. One more step in your path for Him. One more step along life's way. And pretty soon you'll be like the 96-year-old saint that passed away and I get to do their funeral. It's one more step leads you straight into heaven. So as we get ready to close tonight, here's what I'm going to leave you with. Just take one more step. Trust in Him. You think that you can't finish? Trust in God. You think that you can't do it all? Trust in God. And our prayer is this. God, give me strength for one more step. One more God. I don't need all of it. I just need enough. So God, give me strength. With patience, you will help me to mount up on the wings of eagles. So now before we close, I'd like to go to the Lord in a word of prayer. 
I would like to pray for you, and hopefully you'll be out there and you pray for me, that God opens our eyes and gives us strength. Dear Heavenly Father, as we bow our head in your presence, I want to thank you so much, Lord, so much for your word. I want to thank you for the promises in it, Lord. When you said that I would be faint and when I would be weak, Lord, you would give me strength and that you would increase me, Lord. You said that when I was weary, dear Heavenly Father, that you would help me to mount up on the wings of eagles if I just wait upon you. So, Lord, that's what we're doing tonight. Lord, I ask, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, that you just give us the strength and the, and, the, and the knowledge, dear Heavenly Father, and the wisdom, Lord, to just wait on you and just take one more step. Lord, let us trust in you because you are the everlasting God. God, you always have been and you always will be. And God, your love for us knows no bounds. So, Lord, I just pray now that you just help each person that might be watching this video tonight or might see it. Lord, I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would help each heart, dear Heavenly Father, just to take one more step. And, Lord, again, I just thank you for all that you've done for us. For it's in your Son's precious name that we pray. Amen. So, until Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, back here on Facebook Live, or if you've had a chance, come out and visit with us at church. We're doing the social distancing thing. It's worked out fairly well. Uh, a few changes. It's been a little odd, but hey, you know what? Sometimes it pays to get outside of the norm. Come out and be with us at 10 o'clock Sunday morning. I look forward to seeing you here or back on Facebook Live. But until then, Pastor Randy, out.